it going to take for you to get that filthy dump removed from my factory? I'm glad to be able to report some progress. I went before the city council at their meeting last Tuesday. Little and... good that will do. It'll take more drastic action than that. While I'm waiting for you to do something, they're piling junk and rubbish around my factory, where I should have green grass and fresh air for my workers to breathe. The dumps were located where they are long before you bought this property to erect a factory. On. I've heard all that before. How do you expect me to get efficiency out of my workers with that stench in their nostrils? There has to be a dump someplace. Naturally, it's going to be hard to find another spot without going way outside the city limits. Now, that would cost the taxpayers more for hauling. Now, what do I care about that? What do you think I'll put you in office for? Come here and see for yourself. Look at it. Even with my windows closed, I can't keep it out. Take nothing out of this dump without the Duchess tells you you can. Is that a law? Yeah, it's a law. I don't know who made it, but nobody takes nothing. Where is she? She's over there. She just found a pocketbook. Anything in it? No, but she's taking the brass off it. She sells that, you know. Gotta keep happy and keep on the jump. Have a strong stomach when you're working the dump. You're making a living, aren't you? Yeah. Are you crabbing about? I ain't crabbing, I'm singing. Cut it out. Hey! Not there! Back here's what I told you. All right. That way you want it? Another stunt like that and you'll be looking for a job. <laughs> you dirty thief, that's stealing. You know nobody can take anything unless Aggie says they can. I ain't scared of that old woman. Who said she's queen around here? Who gave her the right to have first pick? It's none of your business who gave her the right. She's had him for 15 years and as long as I'm here, she's gonna keep him. Ah, you're an old fool, Henry Jones. I know things. You're in love with her, that's what. I bet you've even popped the question. Well, it won't do you no good. She couldn't marry you if she wanted to. I know. If you know so much, why don't you spill it? I wouldn't help that old woman for a cake of moonshine. I don't like your insinuations. Get down out of that truck and I'll bust you in the jaw. Sure. Joe. You want to buy it? Much mine is still yours. Oh, then you must want to buy it. I know you wouldn't want to steal it. Four dollars, Tony, give me for it. Well, I wouldn't give you four dollars. But... What's this? That's a tennis racket. You play a game with it. Uh-huh. Abel's have a lot of fun with this. 
Mm. Your butt will never get that. Put that down, Joe. Oh. Joe, you're fired. There's your dough. Better blow with this, don't you? Yes, I've seen him play it in the park. <laughs> Ed will be getting up soon and wanting breakfast. Come on over, Henry, and have some coffee. All right. Peggy, I want to talk to you about something. Fire away. Well, for one thing, you shouldn't be pulling guns on people. You're going to get in trouble. What am I to do? You can marry me. Joe Cummer's quite a talker, ain't he? Oh, you can't make head nor tail about what he's talking about. I don't pay any attention to him. That's good. That ain't what I was talking about. Why don't you marry me? I can take care of you in April and... and she's getting too big to live on these dumps. Morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. Hello, Henry. Morning, April. My, you are getting to be a big girl. Almost as big as mother. I'll bet you'll soon be big enough to play tennis. I already know how. I play with Mary in the park. She loans me her brother's racket. You won't have to borrow any more. Oh, Henry, where'd you get it? Your mother got it for you. One of the men brought it for you. I heard him say he picked it up back at the Hollowell home. You know, the Hollowells are related to the Vanderdools in Pittsburgh. You can't tell? Maybe it belonged to one of the Vanderdool girls. I'll bet it's a professional racket. Mumsy, can I buy a ball? How much is it? Twenty-five cents at the ten-cent store. There. Go wash your face and put on your dress. Breakfast is ready. Here, buy a new hair ribbon or, or anything you want. Oh, thank you, Henry. Let me see what I gave you. What'd you do that for? Here, buy a ball with that and you'll have a lot left. You know what? I'm going to be champion of the park. Then I'm going to be champion of the whole town. <laughs> Come on and get ready. Gotta watch your pennies when you're bringing up Kitty. You haven't answered me yet, Aggie. What'd you ask? I asked you to marry me. Me and you could bring that young and upright. I got four trucks now and a good hauling contract. And I saw a cute little four-room house over the tracks only today. Henry, I think you're the best friend I ever had. But it can't be that way. Anyway, I'm too old. Oh, you're not old. You're ten years younger than I am. But you're always thinking of what happened long ago. And I ain't asking about it. I don't care if you ain't. I wouldn't tell you if you did. Oh, I didn't mean to holler at you like that, Henry. But past or no past, it can't be that way. Yes, but you should be thinking of April. She's growing up. I reckon I don't think of much else. She's going to be somebody. I'm going to send her to college. She's going to be rich someday. Tell them absolutely. 
absolutely no discount. Nothing was said about discount when they bought the merchandise. Yes, Mr. Morehouse. Williams, what is that incessant noise? <laughs> I don't know, sir. Well, go and find out. Yes, sir. Here, answer that. Hello? Just a minute. The mayor's on the phone, so you want to speak to him? Yeah. Put him on. Say, listen, and get this straight. I've been talking to your health department about removing this dump away from my factory, and I get nothing but promises. What? I don't want to listen to any more alibis. And if you want this job back again in September, you'll get some action. Tell that rat to stop. Yes. No, wait, I'll do it myself. Please. Mr. Morehouse. I'm glad to see you personally. About that last shipment of ours. It wasn't up to standard quality, and I feel we should have an adjustment. Oh, you do, eh? Well, we never make adjustments after the contracts have been signed. If you don't like our merchandise, go somewhere else. But the sample we ordered from was entirely different. William. I'm sure he'll give you a credit on the next order. Hey, kid. Cut that out. Why? Never mind why. I've told you to stop. You're not my boss. Come on, get out of here. Go on. It's only a soft tennis ball, Mr. Morehouse. It couldn't hurt anything. Just go through a window and jam up my machine. Now get for home and stay there. You ought to be ashamed of yourself letting a kid play around here. Oh, Mumsy, I wasn't hurting his old factory. Go on home, dear, and study your lessons. You'll find some cookies in the yellow jar under the wash tub. Elias, you don't look well. Are you sick? Certainly not. Yes, you are. You wouldn't be so cranky. You're working yourself to death in that old factory, and for what? You won't be here forever to enjoy all you've made. I guess you won't be the only one who'll be glad to see that happen. Well, now, you know better than that. Well, you needn't bother. You'll be taken care of. I'm going to have that fester spot removed, and you're going to move with it, whether you want to or not. The boss is in the big conference for the Duchess. Oh, that's nothing. Say, I've been working here for five years, and I ain't ever seen him go out that back door yet that she didn't come running like a silly schoolgirl. <laughs> you couldn't call it puppy love, could you? No, uh, more like that uh, platonic something or other. <laughs> We're neither of us getting any younger. No need to be going over that old story again. I know it by heart. I know what you're really after. My money. Now that's not true and you know it. Well, you're getting ready to force my hand, aren't you? No, I'm not. I've never told a soul and I'm not going to. You're lying, Aggie Specs. You're planning to trap me. I know that you've got Joe Comer working over there for you. Elias! You ought to be ashamed. You've ruined my whole life following me around, living on dumps under my window. But I know how to beat you and I'm going to do it. You're too cruel to live. That old meanie Morehouse chased me away from practicing against his wall. That's the only place I can play by myself. And I gotta practice. Mm -hmm. Look how soft that wall is. Oh, that ball wouldn't hurt anything. Could be so mean. Don't tell Mumsy. I'll find a piece of glass and fix it. <laughs> oh, 
What's the matter, Aggie? Oh, nothing. Water, quick! April? Oh, my baby. Aggie, stop it. She'll be all right. April, mother's here, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lift my arm. Oh, Henry, help us into the house. <laughs> Henry, go to the doctor. Careful now. Let me lock a duchy. She's too heavy for you. Mums here fix you all up. <laughs> Yes, Doctor. Will it be just as good as it was? Yes, a little weak at first. A doctor, she's all I've got, and I, I wouldn't want to be... Uh... Well, there's nothing to worry about. A broken arm heals quickly. How much, Doctor? Three dollars. I think you'd better drop around a day or two and look her over. Aggie would like it. I'll take care of the bill. All right. I will. Mumsy, where did that new racket come from? Henry bought it for you. That's the best one I ever saw. I bet it cost a hundred dollars. The doctor called you a little lady. You've got to be one. We're going to move away from here pretty soon. Where to? Across the tracks. There's a house over there I can get cheap. When are we going to move? Oh, I don't know. Pretty soon, I guess. Extra paper, Minnie Morehouse dies. Extra paper, Lawrence Morehouse dies. Paper, mister? Paper, mister? You needn't have been to her. He's going to die anyhow. Thank you. Extra paper, paper, mister. Extra paper, millionaire more house guys. Paper, mister. Oh, Miss Wolf. Come here, please. Did you read this? Yes, it is. Old Morehouse left one and a half million dollars. A prosperous manufacturing concern. Not a relative in the world. No will and no reason why. Well, who's gonna get all that money? That's for you to find out. Now there's a good human interest story in this. In the way the old man lived. Building up a fortune. Never enjoying a cent of it. Knowing there was no one to leave it to when he died. Get the idea? Sure sounds swell. Get a cameraman, go out to that factory and see what's what. Go look into all the closets. Thanks, Alvin. I'll bring home the bacon. Wanda. 
When are you going to marry me? Well? Well, I've got my assignment for today. Why don't you ask the society call? What was it? No, I'm Mr. Thompson wants you. Oh. Did you want me? No. Ready? Sure. Not a dime less than four dollars. Now, now, Aggie, you don't want that I should lose money on it? All right, forget it. Bernstein will give me four dollars. Well, here, here, all right, all right. I'll give you four dollars for it. But I'm telling you something. You're taking the bread and butter out from my mouth. Seven dollars you owe me altogether. All right. Five. Six. Seven. Right. <clears throat> Get up. Ah. Get up. Get up. What are you doing around here? Oh, I thought you might want to see the morning paper, so I brought it over to you. I have no time for papers. Well, this one you have. Well, you got what you deserve. Go on, get out. You always said you wanted to go back to Tennessee. Why don't you go? Go on, get out! No, I'm going back to Tennessee, all right. And if you had right good sense, you'd go back too. Back among your own kind, instead of hanging around a dump here. I hope you're satisfied now. I always told you what would happen. He died to get rid of you. Get out! Living quarters were, were through that door there. Well, what, may I look in? Oh, certainly. Is this where he entertained his guests? I mean, after hours. <laughs> there were no guests. What do you suppose the old boy wanted to live here for? Well, you see, miss, uh, the factory was his life, and he didn't seem to care to leave it. Bill. Didn't he have any lady friends? Uh-uh. Not even in his younger days? Well, you see, miss, I watched it over him for years, most night and day. But there were no ladies. Not a very pleasant view from this window. <laughs> no. He spent all his time trying to get them removed. Who lives in that funny little shack? Oh, that's Aggie Specs. Uh, uh, they call her the Duchess. She owns the dumps. Uh, at least why she rules over them. Then uh, Mr. Morehouse must have had some arguments with her. Oh, they were at swords points all the time. 
He wanted more to get rid of her than the place she lived in. Ah, she's a very common person, miss. Thank you, Mr. William. You've given me some splendid material for a story about Mr. Morehouse. Good day. Good day. Come on, Bill. There's another story out here. Come on. Pardon me, I'm Miss Wolf of the Express. Do you mind if we take a picture of the house? I want to use it to illustrate a story. All right, I guess. Mumsy, your cup of tea's on the table. All right, April. Can I go play with my new racket now? Yes. Careful of your arm. Don't go near the factory. Why not? He can't say anything to me now. You mustn't. He didn't want you to. All right. I won't. My, what a pretty child. How'd she hurt her arm? In an accident over there. Doesn't seem to bother her batting that ball around. Gee, she handles that racket like a veteran. She's going to be a champion someday. Anyway, uh, she beats all the children around here. Is uh, she your daughter? Yes. And is April really her name? Yes. I called her April because she thanked me in that month. Well, what's her last name? It ought to be Morehouse. Elias Morehouse? But they said he'd never been married. Listen, you're going to make a claim for all that money for April, aren't you? There wasn't any will. She's entitled to it. No will? No, I just came from there. He didn't leave a scratch of paper of any kind. He died as cruel as he lived. Get some pictures of that girl. She's the heir to the Morehouse Millions. I'll make a lot of them. Come in. Now listen. There's a way to get all that money for April. My editor will know. I've got to rush back to the office and I'm going to start some coming. You'll see what'll happen. I just keep a stiff upper lip and don't say anything to anybody. I'll be back in an hour. There you are. When can I see him? I'll bring you back some later on today. Now, you run in the house with your mother. She isn't feeling so good. Come on, Bill, let's hurry. I got the scoop of the year. As a watchdog, that old guy, Williams, would make a good peek to me. Yeah. Alvin, I found the heir to the Morehouse Million. On the level? Well, not quite. She's a little girl. She lives on the dump, right back at the factory. Her mother is Aggie, the Duchess, the Queen of the Dump. Is that a story or not? Well, it sounds like a fairy tale. Now, here's the hitch. Can a child born out of wedlock inherit her father's fortune? Sure she can, if she can prove it's his child. Well, Aggie told me. She ought to know better than anyone else. Go right, your... Get me the district attorney's office. No matter what anybody asks you, you answer what I've told you. Now, there'll be a lot of news hounds down here before long, and they'll try to pump you. If they ask you anything I haven't given you an answer for, just say you don't know. Yes, miss, but I wish you'd stay here with me. I don't talk so good. I'll stay as long as I can. I'm going to help you win this thing, and I figure there isn't a chance of losing. This is Mr. Thompson, Henry. How do you do? How do you do? Come in, Alvin. This is my boss. He knows everything. This is Miss Specs, Alvin, the queen of the dumps. Oh, I'm really not the queen. <laughs> They've called me the Duchess around here for years. I suppose there's some connection. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I've just come from the district attorney's office. 
I'm certain the little girl is going to get all the money. And I'm fighting for the name, too. Gee, you're pretty swell, do you know that? I'm going up and marry him someday. Hereby ordered, adjudged, and decreed that the entire estate of Elias Morehouse, who has died in test state, shall be awarded to the child known as April, and that she shall be entitled to all the fruits and benefits accruing from the same, that Aggie Specks shall be her legal guardian and the sole executor of her estate until her majority. It is also decreed that this child known as April Specks shall henceforth be known as April Morehouse in accordance with Article 89, Section 5 of the Civil Code of this state. And it's all hers? Yes, it is. It's all like a dream. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Oh, don't thank us. We got the kick of our lives out of it. <laughs> What's hers is yours, Aggie. It's up to you to go out and conquer the world. You mean with my tennis racket? I don't care how you do it, only don't you disappoint your mother. Uh, pardon me, Miss uh, Shax. Have you any statements you'd like to give to the press? The press? What's that? Uh, the newspaper, the morning paper. You say something. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, I take this opportunity on behalf of uh, Aggie and April and the assembled guests to... stands 4015 in favor of April Morehouse against Grace Minor. Miss Morehouse won that last rally with a hot ball to the back of the court after drawing her opponent to the net. This great champion contest is nearing its close and it looks like a walk away for Miss Morehouse who has built up a lead that will be hard to overcome. Now we have just time for station announcements. I wish I understood more about tennis. Uh, what set is this? Ah, uh, George. He can tell you anything you want to know about tennis. Or Miss Morehouse, either. <laughs> it's almost over. If she shoots a fast one down the line, it'll be the end. And then she'll get the cup, won't she? I guess so. She's got a dozen already. Is it true you're engaged? You can confide in me. I won't wire Mr. Winchell. They're not officially <laughs> engaged yet. <laughs> You'd like to marry her, wouldn't you, George? I'm going to if she'll have me. now over and Miss Morehouse is the new champion. Now if I can get close enough to the little lady, I'll have her say a few words to you, so hang on. Miss Morehouse, it gives me great pleasure as president of this association to acclaim you champion and to present you with this emblem of that honor. Well, thank you. Oh, uh, Miss Morehouse, this is going out over a nationwide hookup. Would you be kind enough to say a few words? Oh, wait till I get my friend. Oh, all right. My friend, it's been a great honor to participate in this year's finals. Miss Minor put up a good, stiff game and made me fight for every advantage. She was very kind in allowing me to win. Thank you, Miss Morehouse. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, just a minute. 
Yes? There's something else I'd like to say. Oh, if you're happy. Hello, Monty. I'm starting for home tomorrow. Thank That's you. Very sweet. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Well, congratulations, sir. Oh, thank Always you. Always tuning on this station. Thank this you. This has been a marvelous Very nice match. Thank you. Thank you. Marvelous thank you. Thank you. Very well played. There are thousands. You ought to feel pretty proud, Aggie. Oh, I do. I do. I do. Do you know what day this is? Yes. It's the day April won the championship. It's more than that. It's the seventh anniversary of the day that you walked into this factory as its boss and made it a success. I didn't do much. Oh, yes, you did. The factory's more prosperous than ever. And that isn't all. Look out there. We always wanted it that way. Yeah, but you're the one that changed it. I don't throw bouquets. It was your achievement. But you had the vision. I only followed instructions, and you made me a rich man. Now, as long as you're determined to go home tomorrow, we might just as well get down to this serious matter that faces the House of Robinson. Oh, Dad, forget about it until after dinner. You're running a little ahead of the main event. My son, you're much too slow. Now, when I propose to your oh, mother... Walter, please. Let George do it in his own way. But we have so many things to settle. We must give the news to the gossip sheets, along with our photographs. Oh, Walter, they don't want your picture. They wanted it last year at the big business convention. And I must find out from April a lot of family names, birthplaces, and dates. Why, they haven't even said they were engaged yet. Haven't you asked her? Yes, I'd ask her. Well, what did she say? Said she'd give me her answer tomorrow, before she starts home. Well, you look as if you were afraid to say. No, I'm not afraid. Well, as long as this is going to turn into such a serious affair, let's make it a business meeting. There's no use delaying until tomorrow. Now, I'll be the chairman. The meeting is now open for remarks. Dad. Mr. Chairman, please. All right, Mr. Chairman. The House of Robinson has asked the hand of the beautiful April Morehouse in marriage and moves that he accompany her home to get the consent of her mother. I second that motion. Oh, please stop before this goes any further. Now, just a moment. This only concerns the House of Robinson. And at the present time, you're not one of us. But you must let me talk. I can see you don't know anything about me. They know back home. And I thought you ought to know, too. We do. And if we didn't know already, all we'd have to do would be to read the evening papers. But I don't mean that. I mean about my father and mother. You see, mother's name is Aggie Specks. And my father's name was Elias Morehouse. But we have worse names than that right here in our own set. But can't you see? They were never married. doesn't make any difference, dear. You'll marry me, won't you? Don't be too hasty, George. It might make a difference. Of course, it could be kept quiet for a while, but then some scandal monger might get hold of it, and you'd be snubbed. Not only socially, but in a business way for the rest of your life. If you think I'm going to let a lot of narrow-minded people spoil my life, you're mistaken. Tradition and always doing what is socially expected gives me a pain in the neck. April wasn't responsible for what happened before she was born. Quite right, my boy. But you have a certain responsibility that cannot be thrown off lightly. I'm sorry, Father. I can't see it your way. This is all silly, April. It shouldn't make any difference between us. Your father is right, George. Believe me, I know what it means to have people talk about you behind your back. I wouldn't want my children to go through what I have. Mumsy loved my father. I've never held her to blame. She's a wonderful woman. Of course she is. Or she couldn't have had a daughter like you. Such things have always happened. And always will. Let's get married right away. You might
might just as well say yes now. Because I'll never stop asking you. Do you feel like coming home with me now and meeting Mother? <laughs> you bet I do. Well, William, how's the meeting? Well, the packers only wanted the shortening of their hours, and I thought it best to agree to the eight-hour plan. That seems fair. Yes, I'm glad you agree with me. But uh, the mail order department demand 20% advance on their salaries. I, uh, I think we might compromise at 10%. Get me the report of the mail order department for the past month. You know, William, your mail order business has increased considerably. Yes, I know. Oh, this is splendid. Look, you'll be surprised. Now, twenty percent would only mean four or five dollars more a piece. That would go a long way for those girls. I think I'll give it to them. Oh, thank you, Miss Aggie. They really do deserve it. Go and tell them. I will. Mr. and Mrs. Howard to see you. They were here yesterday, too. You may go right in. That door over there. What can I do for you, Mr. Howard? Miss Bex, you don't know us, but we have a matter of much importance to all of us. Won't you sit down? I'm going to come right to the point. April Morehouse is not your child. I know you raised her, but you never gave her birth. What makes you say that? Because I'm her mother. You are quoted in the paper as saying that the child was born on the 1st of April, 1912. Oh, well, that's true. It was on the night of April the 1st, 1912, that I left my newborn baby girl in a wagon on the dumps where you were to die with the trash and the rest of the unwanted things. There were circumstances at the time that seemed to warrant such an action. You see, Mrs. Howard's parents always objected to our marriage. Things were bad for me that year, and we quarreled, and I left her. She had no money and didn't know where to turn. So she went to her parents for help, but they refused her assistance for anything that was partly mine. She was allowed to come home, but with the restriction that she come home without the baby. So she left it where you found it. No, there are no circumstances to warrant a mother deserting a baby. There are places to go in a time like that. Oh, I was too proud to ask for public charity. Oh, you weren't too proud to be a murderer and a criminal. What makes you think that my girl is the baby you deserted? Mrs. Howard told me there was a scapula tied around the baby's neck with a piece of string. Now you know whether that's true or not. Can you explain why you've waited 20 years to try to find your baby? Well, fortunately, we were brought back together again a few years ago. And when the story of April's life appeared in the papers, my wife told me all about it. So we decided to come and see you. No, oh, you must give her back to us. I've suffered so long. You must know the feeling a mother has. Surely you can understand how I want her. I can understand one thing. April is a famous tennis star, an heiress in her own right. Money may mean something to you. Very little. We expect that our daughter will come back to us without her fortune. But she's happy. Why do you want to disturb that? You speak of the emotions of motherhood in one breath, and then admit an outrage that contradicts all mother instinct in the next. After 20 years, you come begging for a child you don't know. A child that I mothered, saved and scrimped for, lied for, hurted my soul for. But you admit the child is ours. I admit nothing. I'm only trying to find out why you want to tear down something that I've built up. Because we want our child to know that she had a real father and mother, and so that when she goes through life... That's enough. You can't prove a thing. But you just said that... I admit nothing. I said nothing. I don't know whether your game is blackmail or not. But get out of my office before I throw you out. 
That's your attitude. There's nothing left for me to do but to take this matter up with the district attorney. You can take it anywhere you want. Only get out. This is my office and I won't have people of your kind in it. I know all about you, Aggie Specs. The reason you claim the child that belonged to you in Morehouse is that you can claim his fortune. As his mistress, you are entitled to nothing. Get out! I just can't believe that Aggie's confessed. That doesn't sound like her, does it? Well, the boys were there and they say it was on the level. She confessed the child didn't belong to her nor Morehouse. Alvin, something's wrong. Aggie isn't the kind that would tell a lie. It sure floored me. The court accepted her testimony when they awarded the child the estate and made Aggie the executor. Of course, that leaves us in the clear. Here, here, where are you going? I'm going back on the job. You're going to stay right here? Not for your old nightshirt wrapped in cellophane. I started this thing and I'm going to see it finish. See you in jail. More than ten minutes, Miss Wolf. I need Mrs. Thompson. Hey, all right. Oh, Aggie, I feel terribly guilty about the whole thing. I can see I practically put the whole idea in your head. I just jumped to conclusions and you let me go right ahead and rave. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. It wasn't your fault. I wouldn't have done it except for April. There just has to be some way out. There is no way out. I've perjured myself. I'm not April's mother. There many a time I've prayed that I were. I found her when she was a tiny baby, just as they said. There's nothing we can change. I've confessed. I don't give a hang about your confession. You know, besides being a pretty swell person, you're a little stupid. Oh, but there is some way out there, just has to be. Now tell me, if those people made any mention of money or anything like that. Well, I've got to go. If April comes, tell them not to let her in. I couldn't stand that. All right, dear. I'll tell them. Now remember, we put this over before, we will again. The minute her daughter, Miss Morehouse, comes, you let her right in. All right. And if I know anything about April, she'll be here as soon as she gets off the train. Very well. As I was saying, if those lawyers get a hold of Joe Cumber, it's good night for Aggie. He hates her. And he knows something, too, because he's always threatening to spill the beans. Right. Have you seen him lately? I saw him down in the lunch wagon one day last week, saying howdy to everyone he knew. He's probably working in a dump somewhere. That is, if there are any more dumps. 
Say, you ought to get him out of town. Everyone would be just as well off if he'd stayed in Tennessee. Leave it to me. I'll find him. I'll give him some sort of advice. May I see my mother? What's the name? Miss Bex. Why, yes, certainly. Henry, hmm? you stay with George. Surely. I suppose you saw what the papers had to say. Yes, we read them on the train. April took it pretty hard. I read all the papers had to say, and April has told me a lot more. But I wish you would tell me something about our mother. Well, you look like a boy with both feet on the ground, so I'm going to let you have it straight from the shoulder. When I first knew Aggie, she came to the dumps penniless. A picker, sort of scavenger, taking things that other people threw away and turning them into money so she could live and educate April. Little pieces of brass and copper. Once in a while, a lucky find. She had her difficulties. There were other people to combat. She had to fight to hold her own. They gave her the name of the Duchess more out of respect than anything else. The Duchess. That's swell. I've always found people who had nicknames also had personalities and were worth knowing. Mm -hmm. Isn't there something we can do? Get her out and bail or we'll do something. Well, I have an appointment with the district attorney later on today. There's very little can be done. It's a state case now. Entirely beyond local influences or pull. Perhaps I could buy the Howards off and get them to withdraw the charges. Wouldn't do any good. You see, we already have her confession to perjury and obtaining money by fraud. Well, what can they do to her? It'll mean 15 years in prison at least. Nothing but a miracle can save her. Well, uh, go as easy as you can, will you? Naturally. But I also have a duty to perform. We found a new witness for the prosecution in that Specs case, a Joe Comer. He knows all about the finding of the baby. In fact, he knew Aggie back in the mountains before she came here. Have him on tap. This case won't take long. Okay. And did you not under oath testify that the child April was a natural Morehouse and yourself? Yes. And you were in full possession of your mental faculties and knew at the time that you were testifying falsely? Yes. And you testified falsely with the different intent of securing the Morehouse estate and its assets for yourself? It was for April. Just a few more questions, Miss Fex. It is true, is it not, that you had full control of the Morehouse estate from the time it was delivered to you by the corpse? Yes. And you secured the Morehouse estate and all its assets by court decision on the strength of your own testimony? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, please don't ask me any more questions. Is this the place here? Hey, if you don't keep quiet, he'll get put out of here. Now listen, Joe. Don't you leave out a single thing when you start telling. Just tell it all. Tell everything. Mm, you just let me on that witness stand. I've been aching to get this out of my system for years. That's right. <laughs> you could talk better if you'd get rid of that cud. Your Honor, the prosecution rests its case with the testimony of the defendant. 
which proves unjustifiable criminal intent more conclusively than anything I might add. May I ask the court's indulgence for a few moments? Granted. That'll be all, Mr. X. I want to ask the court's leniency in its decision and sentence of the defendant. Consider the sacrifice that this poor woman was making at a time when she saw a chance to better the condition of the one person that she held dear. Surely, a woman who was willing to perjure her soul, her very life, not for herself, but so that this young girl, whom she had cradled from a foundling to womanhood, should have some of the advantages which she herself was denied, surely such a woman deserves some consideration. It appears to me that the motive in this case is much more important than the crime itself. Uh, Your Honor, a witness has just appeared with evidence that has a, a very important bearing on this case. I would like to introduce this man as a witness for the defense. You have the court's permission. The witness name is Joe Cummer. Joe Cummer, take the stand. Isn't that the man you were going to get as a witness for the prosecution? Yes. Then why wasn't he here? He couldn't be found. Pull up your right hand, put your left hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. What is your name? Joe Comer. Sit down. Uh, Mr. Comer, uh, do you know uh, Aggie Specs? Oh, sure I know her. Oh, I know her for 30 years. Well, her old man, my old man, used to work together down in Tennessee. Well, we was kids together. Well, I had an idea one time I wanted to marry her. But she got high flutin' ideas and went around gallivanting after a bank clerk. Do you know if she was ever married? Boy, sure she was. Uh, will you tell the court when and where it happened? Well, it was about 21, two years ago, back down in Tennessee. <laughs> Her old man come over one night and brought his gun, told my old man to get his gun and come along. Well, I followed. <laughs> I seen Aggie Specs married in front of a shotgun. Old man Specs seen they was tied up all right. But it was a legal wedding with uh, the minister and uh, witnesses. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was, there was another fella there besides my old man and, and the minister. The fella she married was a bank clerk. He ran away and left her right after the wedding. Uh, well, will you tell the court the name of the young man that Aggie Specs married? His name was Elias Morehouse. He owned the factory down by the dump. <laughs> you see... You see, Aggie followed him out here, but he wouldn't have nothing to do with it. So she settled down there in the dump so she could be near him. Always begging him to take her back, but he wouldn't do it. Oh, he hated it. Mm. Oh, I've seen them talking together lots of times before he died. Yeah. He hated it, huh? Do you know if there was ever a divorce? Oh, no, there wasn't one I ever heard of. You see, he was ashamed of it. I didn't even want folks to know he was married to her. But they were married. Oh, yeah. Tight in a drum. I seen it with my own eyes. Your witness, Mr. District Attorney. Your Honor, the question arises in my mind whether we have the right to prosecute Aggie Specs for obtaining money fraudulently. 
when the money would have naturally come to her by right of inheritance. Well, as it stands, it's purely a matter of a technical lie. Goodbye, darling. I'm going to scoop you this time. I'll just guess at the judge's decision. Think so? Well, just listen to what the newsboys are yelling while you're on your way to the phone. That will be all, Mr. Cullen. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to help. Miss Fix, will you please take the stand again? Well, I guess I got even with her that time, huh? You did noble. Mm. Thanks. Why didn't you tell the court at the time of Mr. Morehouse's death that you were his wife and entitled to his estate? Mr. Morehouse was a rich and successful man. I lived in the dumps. No one would have believed me. Just a minute, Mr. Counselor. In view of the circumstances which involves a technical interpretation of the law, the court doesn't feel called upon to hand down a decision and dismisses that part of the case for lack of evidence. <laughs> Miss Morehouse, I'd like to ask you a few questions. How old are you? Twenty. How long have you gone by the name of April Morehouse? Since Mr. Morehouse died. According to the evidence brought out in this trial, Mr. and Mrs. Howard are your parents. Do you know them? Yes. I've had several meetings with them since mother. That is, Mumsy was arrested. Were the meetings friendly? Hardly. I hold a great deal of resentment for the unhappiness they brought to us. And I quite frankly told them so. Mm. You're of legal age in this state. And it's for you and not the court to decide whether you will live with your mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Howard, or your guardian, Aggie Specks. Oh, I'll stay with Mumsy. Then that's the decree of this court. Right, sir, Judge. I thought you had it all fixed. It's a very unjust decision. Oh. oh, Walter, here's a wire from George. Well, read it. What does he say? If you love your son at all, please send congratulations, felicitations, and confirmation to Mr. and Mrs. George Robinson. You don't need to worry about April's family. Her mother's a duchess. Do you think you can get packed in time to catch tonight's train? Oh, now, Walter, you're not going to make any trouble, are you? Oh, no, no. I just want to meet the duchess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>